Good morning, Grade 8s, and welcome to our Worksheet Cloud Grade 8 Natural Sciences lesson. I'm so glad that you've joined us today. If you have a question during the lesson, please will you email your question to us, grade 8 at worksheetcloud.com. So a little quote that I have for you today is strive for progress, not perfection. So it's going to be very difficult to perfect this art of online learning. But if your aim is just to progress, if your aim is just to do a little bit each day, I think it will it will all add up and that you will find yourself in a very happy, positive space. So strive for progress and not perfection. I am Mrs. Ernston, the Worksheet Cloud Grade 8 Natural Sciences teacher. You do need your notes, pens and pencils and your books out for this lesson. And remember to take notes as we discuss things in our online class. I think it's really important to keep a record of what we do each day and not just to sit back and watch the lesson. It will also be really valuable if you can keep a record of this work and of these lessons so when you do get back to school you are able to show your teacher the work that you have done so if you've just joined us for this lesson now this is our third lesson on density so you may want to go back and revise the previous lessons so the first lesson was just on the terms the definitions and looking at the density equals mass over volume calculation. The second lesson, we had a look at the density of three different blocks. The third lesson, we had a look at the density of an unknown substance, and now we are looking at density and linking up with phases of matter. So we do need to revise our knowledge on the phases of matter today. Hopefully you'll understand density a little bit better. How do we determine an unknown substance using mass, volume, and density? The density is a property of matter. We're going to compare the density of the volume of a solid, a liquid, and a gas. And lastly, we might look at how does ice float on water? And we might be able to answer that question. So this is a really good activity to start and end the lesson off with. It's a bridge activity where we look at three, two, one levels of understanding. So now I want us to look at your prior understanding of density and your prior understanding of phases and matter. And then what we will do is we'll work through the lesson. And at the end of the lesson, we'll be able to bridge your prior knowledge with what you learned in today's lesson. So I would like you to jot down three thoughts or three words that you have on density and phases of matter. Then I would like you to pose any two questions that you have that link density and phases of matter. And then are you able to come up with any analogy? So an, an, an analogy is an unrelated concept that will link certain concepts and themes with density and phases of matter. So it's sort of something unrelated that can pull these concepts together. So pause the video now, spend about two, two to three minutes doing a prior understanding three, two, one. So to engage in this lesson, I have a glass of water with ice floating in it. And the question I pose for this lesson is why does ice, which is a solid, float on water, which is a liquid? And right at the end of the lesson, we'll be able to answer this question. So we have covered the concepts of this slide in our lessons on the particle model of matter. But just to revise your memories and refresh your concepts and terminology, we have three phases of matter, a solid, a liquid, and a gas. 
and the molecules in each of these behave differently. So to elaborate on this topic, density tells us how tightly packed a material is. And density is a measure of how much mass of a material fits into a given volume. So what has the greatest density? Is it a solid, a liquid, or a gas? So A is a solid, B is a liquid, and C is a gas. They both have exactly the same volume, this cube. So the volume in all instances is the same. But if we have a look, how many particles do we find? And how does the number of particles in a gas compare with the number of particles in a liquid comparing with the number of particles in a solid? So the solid has the highest density because it has the greatest mass. Remember, density equals mass divided by volume. And in this case, the volume for all three of these cubes is the same. So what will differ between cube A, B, and C is the number of particles, and the number of particles all have a mass. So since the solid has the greatest number of particles, it is going to have the greatest mass. The gas is going to have the lowest density because it has the smallest mass in the same volume. It has the smallest number of particles that occupy the same volume. So which container, A, B, or C, contains the greatest number of particles? And which container contains the smallest number of particles? Container A contains the most particles and C the least. So keep in mind, however, that in reality, the number of particles would be impossible to count. We cannot see these number of particles with the naked eye. We are looking at this at a sub-microscopic level. So we are imagining what the particles look like. So the density of a gas is significantly lower than the density of the other two phases. So which container, A, B, or C, contains the material with the greatest mass? And which container has the smallest mass? And what is your reasoning for this? Why do you say this is so? The container with the most particles would contain the greatest mass. Therefore, A has the most particles and will contain the greatest mass. C has the least number of particles and would have the smallest number of mass. The solid has the highest density because it has the greatest mass. And gas has the lowest density because it has the smallest mass in the same volume. So back to our glass of water. If the solid has the highest density, that means the liquid has a lower density. So how come do ice cubes float on the liquid? How come in this case the solid is lighter than the liquid? Or the solid is less dense than the liquid? It must have to do with the arrangement of particles. So I know this is a lot to read, but it is important that we go through it. So I will read it with you. You can also pause the screen to read through it by yourself. And as we go through it, why don't you pull out some key words? So the high density of a solid material. So the high density of a solid material explains why it cannot be compressed. So the particles in a solid are tightly packed. Okay, so the particles are tightly packed. Therefore, they cannot be squeezed together into a smaller volume. Liquids are also very dense. 
the density of a liquid is roughly the same as the density of the solid states of the same substance. Okay, so we can just go density of liquid is roughly the same. This is because the particles are close together. So even though they are not locked into fixed positions, so it's very important that you remember they're not locked into fixed positions, most liquids cannot be compressed. So liquids are slightly less dense than their solid states, but water is an exception. Gases are not very dense at all because they have large spaces between the gas particles. This means they contain a small number of particles in a large volume. And this is why gases can be compressed. Their particles can be squeezed together to fit into a smaller volume. So think back to when we had a look at the particle model of matter and the fact that we were able to compress air into a gas tank or we were able to compress air into the um, cylinders that scuba divers use or the gas cylinders that we use for cooking and camping. These are two molecules of water. The molecule on the left is what the water molecules look like in a solid. The diagram on a right is what the water molecules look like in a liquid. So do you see how there are bigger spaces between the water molecules in a liquid than in a solid? So here we have much bigger spaces between the particles than here. So this also helps to explain why icebergs are able to float in the sea or why ice floats in water. So density tells us how tightly packed a material is. And density is the measure of how much mass of a material fits into a given volume. So here is what the model arrangement of particles in a solid water or water in a solid state ice look like. So the solid state of water ice is less dense than liquid because in ice the water molecules are packed in a very unique way. Water molecules in ice are packed in such a way that there are open spaces between them. And this diagram here shows water molecules in a liquid state. The density of ice is 0 0.92 grams per centimeters cubed. And the density of water is 1 gram per centimeter cubed. So therefore, when we have a glass of water, we would expect the ice, which is less dense than liquid, to float. So what I would like you to do now is look at what you wrote down for your prior understanding before the start of the lesson. So go back and have a look at any thoughts, the three thoughts or words that you wrote down, any two questions you had, and an analogy that you were able to think about. And now, after going through this lesson, what are three new thoughts or ideas that you had? And are there any more questions that you may have? I want you to think of two further questions that have piqued your curiosity through the course of this lesson. And then can you think of another analogy that links today's lesson? Grade 8, if you have any questions, please remember you can email your questions to grade 8 at worksheetcloud.com. 
So grade eights, thanks so much for watching the lesson today. It was great having you in the online class. This lesson was brought to you by Worksheet Cloud. I look forward to seeing you at the lessons later on this week. Bye grade eights.